Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a discovery of a very peculiar supermassive black hole in a galaxy far, far away. A supermassive black hole that seems to be producing these very periodic flare-like explosions that don't actually have a very good explanation just yet. Explosions that generate just the same amount of power as a typical supernova does. But because these flares appear to be periodic and also because they seem to have a pattern of about 114 days, it does suggest that this has something to do with something else orbiting the supermassive black hole and most likely producing these effects. So let's talk a little bit more about this discussion because this is actually somewhat unusual and somewhat interesting. And the first thing I wanted to mention is just these black hole flares in general. We know that a typical black hole, even if it's not very massive, is able to produce a lot of different types of flares with some of these flares being produced as a lot of different types of radiation is reflected through the accretion disk, which can kind of act like a mirror to certain types of frequencies. But some other flares being a result of all sorts of magnetic and electromagnetic interactions by the material and the black hole itself. Mostly because all of this has a lot of magnetic charge, including the black hole itself that does possess charge as well. And so just like our sun has these magnetic interactions that result in solar flares, this is of course based on the magnetic line interaction. Something similar can happen around massive black holes as well, with obviously a lot more energy being released, with some of these flares being visible from really, really far away distances. Now we do have example of this from Sagittarius A star, from the supermassive black hole in the middle of the Milky Way galaxy. We know that there's a lot of interaction of various types of materials in this particular system, and the thing is, we do detect certain flares. And one such large flare was detected only a few years ago, and it doesn't really have a very good explanation just yet. And so these flares can be visible from really far away distances. But we think that most of the time it's because certain types of gas or certain types of material possibly either gets really really close to the accretion disk and kind of interacts with it, producing these really large nuclear explosions, or maybe even gets trapped inside the black hole, which also releases a lot of energy. And so detecting these random flares here and there and also seeing these really bright flashes once in a while is actually kind of normal. What is however unusual is if these flares start having patterns, if you can start being able to predict them, because that's not something we can easily do right now. For example, for the supermassive black hole in the middle of our own galaxy, we have no idea what it's going to do in the next few days, in the next few months, or even in the next few years. But we also know that it did have a lot of powerful emissions in the past. And so trying to predict them and trying to understand them is obviously quite important. But then once in a while we discover something unusual in another galaxy. And this time it's in this galaxy you see right here known as ESO 253-3. It's located roughly around 500 million light years away from us. And roughly around 6 years ago back in November of 2014, the automated system known as Assassin or All Sky Automated Survey for Supernova was able to detect a potential supernova in this region. In other words, a potential supernova was detected in the middle of this galaxy. But this type of a flare event and this type of an activity is not really unusual. We've been detecting supernova for a very, very long time. As a matter of fact, as of today, it detected 1183 different supernova using an automated series of telescopes around the planet. But one of the first detections was that particular supernova back in 2014. Okay, it wasn't really the first first, it was number 73, but it was one of the first official detections. But a few years later, one of the researchers, whose name is Anna Payne, was doing her thesis and trying to analyze various explosions, various supernova in the night skies. To her surprise, she identified something unusual going on in this particular galaxy. There were 17 different flashes, 17 supernova-like flashes that all had very particular pattern. Pattern that repeated every 114 days and that seemed to be relatively similar, as if something similar was happening in this region every 114 days with the overall flash becoming extremely bright relatively quick and then slowly fading away for several days and disappearing for 114 days until it comes back and does it again. And that's of course something that we've actually never seen before coming from a supermassive black hole. Such periodicity currently does not have a very good explanation, but there are quite a few and none of them of course involve aliens. First potential explanation here is that, well, maybe what we're looking at 
is actually related to another supermassive black hole in the center that interacts with the larger black hole. Basically, it's an interaction between two very, very massive and very energetic black holes. This is actually yet another paper that was released by this team, where they were able to identify a second active galactic nucleus in this galaxy. But the major problem with this explanation is that these objects are really far away from one another. They don't actually orbit close enough to have these very predictable patterns that we're observing from this galaxy, so it's most likely not a supermassive black hole partner. The other explanation involves a star possibly passing through the accretion disk and generating a lot of energy when it passes through this region. Now this is a pretty good explanation too, but the problem here is that we should be seeing two such events with two very specific and very distinct types of energy. Mostly because at some point the star will probably have to pass through the other side of the disk and generate something else slightly different from the original type of energy. We don't really see that. Instead, the emissions seem to be more or less the same. Which takes us to the most likely explanation. It's probably a star being stripped apart by the tidal interactions and as it comes really, really close to the black hole, it ends up losing some of its material due to the tidal stripping, and this piece of the star then starts to interact with the accretion disk and the black hole itself. And because in this case this star orbits with a very high eccentricity, it actually ends up leaving this particular region for at least 100 days before coming back and doing this again. And every single time it passes close to the black hole, it seems to lose approximately three masses of Jupiter in, in gas, and this gas then strikes the accretion disk, it then strikes even the black hole itself, and that in turn generates this tremendous amount of energy. And since the mass of this black hole is about 78 million masses of the Sun, which is I think about 20 times more massive than the one in the middle of our own galaxy, this also means that there's probably a lot more material and a lot more energy in the system which allows it to generate these ridiculously powerful flares that do seem to appear as a typical supernova from a distance. And because it releases something like three masses of Jupiter of mass, this mass is enough to essentially create these ridiculously bright explosions. But there are two questions we can really answer right now. First of all, we don't really know how big the star was in the beginning. And second of all, we have no idea how long it's going to go on for. For example, our Sun contains roughly around 1050 masses of Jupiter. This means that if our Sun was in the system and was losing just as much mass every single passage, it means that it would most likely last for roughly around 100 or about 115 years before essentially becoming absolutely nothing. But that's of course if it loses 3 masses of Jupiter every 114 days. But that's of course our Sun, and it's a relatively small star. Some stars, like for example Betelgeuse, could possibly last for a thousand years. And so in that sense, we don't really know what's happening there and how long it's going to keep going on for. But nevertheless, it is a very interesting observation and the fact that the scientists behind this paper were able to absolutely accurately predict when it's going to happen next is actually what makes this study really interesting. We now know exactly when it's going to happen again and the next question here is when is it going to stop happening? Because that's probably when we're going to finally be able to answer what's really going on here and what's really causing all of this. Once it stops happening, we might have a better answer. But until we learn more about all of this, or until we see something else unusual coming from this galaxy, that's unfortunately all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the One Full Person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.